welcome back to Christ and Coffee. Um, so shout out to Mahogany J for this sweatshirt. I absolutely love it. Thank you, Mahogany J, for this um, sweatshirt, for having this brand. I'm not the girl that I used to be. Make sure you follow her. I'm going to tag her. But today, um, I want to talk to the men. And I want to talk to the women. I'm a, I'm a woman, so I'm kind of going to be biased in what I'm sharing. But... <laughs> But, you know, I really do want to address the men. Last week, I talked about the Proverbs 31 woman. But this time, I want to address the king and you. So if you got a homeboy, a brother, or somebody, send him this video. I think it'll bless him. And it's definitely going to bless you, ladies. Let's get into the word. So um, the scripture is Deuteronomy chapter 17, verses 14 through Throw down a couple points that stuck out to me about this scripture. Okay, number one. A king, your king, ladies, the king you want to be men, has to be chosen by God. In the same way, you do get to choose your king because the Bible says that when you decide that you want to have a king and establish a king like the other nations, um, it says, be sure to appoint over you the king, the Lord, your God chooses. So not only do, do you choose, but so does God. God has a choice and you have a choice. And you have the, the freedom to establish who you want to lead your home, to lead your life, to, to lead your kingdom in a sense, right? But in that choice, we honor God by giving up our own choice and what we think we want to manifest and establish in our life so that God can manifest and establish who he knows is the best option for us. So when you get to this place that you want to manifest this king in your life, let it be God's choice, right? Because we've seen in scripture that there have been kings established and set up and appointed by um, the people, and we've seen how they are. King Herod, who tried to take out all the Jewish, uh, the uh, Jewish babies. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar, who threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. Like we, there have been kings that have been established um, in scripture or in different nations that have been just terrible. Okay. But then there are good kings like uh, King Lemuel, who we talked about a little bit in the Proverbs 31. Um, there have been kings like David, Solomon, right? Good kings that were established by God, who God allowed their kingdom to sustain and their legacy and their story to sustain well beyond their lives because of their obedience and submission to God, even in their high ranked leadership. So let God choose your king. Number two. Be equally yoked. The Bible says, do not place a foreigner over you, one who is not a brother of Israelite. You must be from among your own brothers, okay? Your king. Listen, y'all can take that how y'all want to take it, but the way I believe God gave it to me is be equally yoked. Bring somebody into your life that leads your home, that understands your needs, right? When we vote for a president or when we vote for leadership over our country, we are looking at their campaign and their platform based on how they are going to support us given the circumstances we have going on in our life. We got student loan debt. We're going for people that's eliminating that. We got uh, foreign issues and things that need to be regulated better. We're going for the person whose platform will address that. Deal with somebody who has a platform, who has values, who has principles, who comes from where you are or has been where you have been and they understand the need that is or the or have the principles and values in place that will help sustain your little country, your home, your kingdom to push it forward into the future. Be equally yoked is what I got from that. OK, the third thing is. um. Don't have a king who acquires wealth for their own selfish intent. So I got that because it says the king, moreover, must not acquire great numbers of horses for himself or make the people return to Egypt. And we're going to get into that in a second. But you want to make sure you have a king or that you are a king that is not moving on selfish intent. That's not self-made. That's like I did it myself. I acquired all this wealth and all this money on my own. Self-proclaimed. Listen, everybody has somebody that supports them along the way. OK, and granted, self-made. I'm not going to argue with you about your definition of that. But 
make sure that you have someone in leadership that is not doing so with their own intentions or their own desires and mind only, that they're for the people. They're using the resources to support the home, support the family, support the queen, support the princes and princesses. They're not just trying to acquire things just to have it for themselves. Because if you allow a man that is selfish and self-absorbed to lead your home, you and your children will be deprived and you won't have what you need and you will, <laughs> and it can be a, a whirlwind of trouble. Okay. So that's another thing. Then it goes into saying, I love this y'all. It goes into saying, the king moreover must not acquire great numbers of horses for himself or make the people return to Egypt to get more of them. For the Lord has told you, you are not to go back that way again. Ladies, let me just, <laughs> let me just address this real quick. Listen, don't have, don't establish a king. Don't appoint a king in your life that will force you to go back to the things that God delivered you from. Sis. Okay, the Israelites were slaves to the Egyptians for over 400 years and God delivered them. He po he did all these plagues, went through all this trouble and whatever else to get the Israelites out of Egypt. God said, don't let no man take you back to the Egypt, the place I delivered you from. There are some men out there that will take you back, that will trigger you from the abuse, the neglect, the abandonment, whatever you have experienced. There are some people out there that will take you back, okay? And God is saying, don't you dare appoint somebody over you that's going to send you back into the things you used to go into or the things you used to be entrapped and enslaved to for their own gain. Don't let no king send you back to Egypt to grab him some more horses. You know, lost your mind. God didn't deliver me. I ain't going back there. And you shouldn't. You shouldn't appoint a king that make you feel like you have to, okay? Let's keep going. I'm sorry, okay? And men, listen, if you want to be a king, you want to govern your wife, you want to govern your home and lead your home in a way that honors God, listen, don't put her back in a place that she used to be in. Don't put your kids into a place that you were in because you dealt with neglect from, from fathers and mothers and so forth. And you dealt with abuse or you dealt with these issues. So now you take your children and your seed back into that place. Don't, listen, if you're going to lead the people out of Egypt, and you're going to govern and lead your household, lead them forward, not backwards. Okay, I'm moving on, child. Whew, that's a word. All right, let's see. All right, okay. Can't have a lot of women, <laughs> okay? Because this generation is out of pocket with the roster. Hello? All right, the Bible says, he must not take many wives or his heart will be led astray. Ladies, ladies. The Bible says in Proverbs 31, when uh, King Lemuel's mother was addressing him, she said, listen, don't give yourself over to these type of women and don't give yourselves over to the, these types of women. But a, no, but a wife of noble character, a wife, a wife of noble character, one woman. Don't give yourself over to all these ladies because what happens when you're trying to share your attention with all these women that are drawn to you because of your wealth, because of your um because of your roy because you're royal, because you are um a stand-up guy, because you are a leader, because you're a man of standard and substance, women are gonna flock to you as a king. Women are gonna be drawn to you, and some women that'll be drawn to you are going to be there with the assignment to destroy you and to destroy the kingdom you're establishing with your family, with the woman that you have selected and love. So don't give yourself to all these women. Don't give in to the temptation of having the option of all these women. Opt out and choose God and the wife that he has given you. Because when you introduce yourself to a whole bunch of women, your heart will be led astray from the woman that you are supposed to establish your kingdom with. So be careful. <laughs> Okay, it's a hot girl summer. It's a city girl season. And you just want to walk away from both. You're supposed to be staying inside anyway. You're supposed to be quarantining, don't you? Anyways, okay? That's what the Lord said. Ladies, listen. Your king should not have a whole bunch of concubines, wives, and everything else, okay? He should be a one ladies man, all right? That's what God said about your king. Okay, we moving on. Next is 
needs to be in his word. I love that. So it goes on from 18 to 20 to say, this king needs to write the law of the Levites, the priests, the men of God that were chosen by God. They need to write the law down, the scriptures on their own scroll and daily take into account what was written on the scroll. AKA your man needs to be in his word. A king appointed by God, a king who will have a throne that is established for the rest of his life and for generations and generations to come is a man who is able to stay, a man who is able to stay in his word and take the word of God and write it on in his heart. Right. The Bible talks about writing the word and having the, the word in your heart, tablets of the word in your heart. You have to have the word established in you. As a man, and ladies, let me just address this too. You can't do it for him. It says when he takes the throne of his kingdom, he is to write for himself, write for himself on a scroll, a copy of this law taken from that of the priests who are Levites. It is to be with him and he is to read it all the days of his life so that he may learn to rever the Lord his God and follow carefully all the words of this law in these degrees decrees and not consider himself better than his brothers and to turn from the law right or to the left. Listen, he has to already establish a relationship with God to walk in the kingdom, to walk in kingship. And when it comes time for you to appoint a king, if he not already in his word like that, sis, you can't make him. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't have a way of bringing people around. Okay. He did it for King Nebuchadnezzar, but why go through all that trouble? When you can already appoint somebody who is already given to God, already submissive to God, because if he knows, if God taught this man how to love, then surely he will love you and your children and your children's children. And God will honor a man that takes into account his word and that will not stray from his word and that will govern and lead his family according to the word that God already established. He will honor it so much so that his reign will rule all the days of his life. OK, so make sure he's already in his word by himself. Brothers, kings, get in your word. Follow God. Let God teach you how to govern your home, how to lead your company, how to lead your friendships, you know, how to lead in relationships and family dynamics, how to restore those relationships, build allies with other countries. Like, and I'm speaking in figurative terms, but you get me like, let God lead you and do that on your own accord. Not because the woman you're with is encouraging you to have a relationship with God. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be a king, if you want to bring out the king that is in you, you have to be governed by the word of God and let God appoint you to this place after he's developed your heart and built you up to be the leader and the man of God that you're called to be. So this went on a whole lot longer than I expected, but we're going to pray and get out of here. Okay. Lord, we thank you for teaching us about kingship and teaching us about the king that is in these men, Lord. Thank you, God, for giving us free will and choice, God, that we are always tested with the opportunity to decide if we want to submit our way to you, God, or if we want to go our own way, God. But I thank you for your word because you govern us and lead us accordingly. And when that time comes for us women to establish a king in our life, I pray that we will remember these words, remember what your words say, and that we will go forth, appoint the king that you have chosen for our lives, God. And I pray for men who are um, maybe not in your word, who are maybe out there or trying to get to a place where they are um, selecting the wife that they will have for the rest of their life and thinking about establishing a family of their own. I pray that they will remember your word and write this on the scrolls, Lord God, of their own heart so that they can, or the tablets of their heart, so that they can remember your word and become the man that you have called and created them to be and walk in kingship as you have called them to. And I thank you, Lord, and praise you, and I pray your will will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.